Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. Well, I thought I would set up one more experiment before the end of the year. And this is going to be one of those really long-running ones. I want to answer a very simple little question. And that question is, just how much filtration do I need uh, for a given setup? And to answer that question, I am going to first start off with sponge filters because I had just made that build. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three identical chambers and those chambers are going to sit inside a box filter like the one that you just saw and i'm not going to create just one box filter i'm going to make two and the reason for that is i could have just cut that sponge into three pieces uh, let it get acclimated and then after that i could uh, remove and add back in sponges depending on how the filtration was going and uh, see how the tank responds to that but whenever i do that i'll end up disturbing the sponge and I don't really want to do that I want it to be as stable as possible so I'm gonna create like I said a second box and what I'm gonna do is these are all gonna sit inside the first one and I'll get them acclimated and then what's gonna happen is as I set that tank uh, at a tank up I should say uh, with that filter in it with fish in it I'm going to let that equilibrate get to the point where the tank is perfectly balanced and then I'm going to lift out without disturbing the uh, chamber itself uh, one of the chambers and then I'm going to take that chamber so that it doesn't lose its filtration capacity and I'm going to drop it in the second box and have it <coughs> continue to filter in a different aquarium and I'm going to gradually reduce them uh, and then of course possibly uh, go back up depending upon how the tank is responding and hopefully answer in the end just how much filter media is necessary to not just you know keep the fish alive but have a nice stable environment my only real concern is what happens of course if one of these sponges turns out to be more than enough uh, at that point, if we get to that point, I should say, uh, what I'll do is, as you can see here, they're very easy to cut. So what I can do is cut them in half and try going down even further. So we'll wait until that time uh, shows up. Another thing I want to do after I'm satisfied with the sponges is try out other media. And at that point, I'll definitely get your input and you guys can uh, give me suggestions as to what else to try. Now, I want to show you this because... It is kind of neat. Uh, I had to use this uh, a smaller diameter one uh, to cut the hole for the other sponge. And these are terrible, as you can see the wobble there. These are terrible hole saws. But the nice thing about them is they're, uh, they're because they're brand new, they're nice and sharp. And this is just sponge. It deflects really easily if you put any kind of pressure on it. And as you can see, it's moving through here uh, very, very smoothly. And it gives a really nice hole. So. I'm kind of glad I got them. They were really, really cheap, and uh, they're proving to be quite useful because I have a, a number of different uh, diameters now, and I can do things like this, which is I mean, it's excellent. I really am happy that I have it, even though, again, they're not the best. So there you go. Uh, very easy to do, and as you can see here, creates a, the perfect hole for it. So all I need to do now is make the chambers. I've cut all the sponges and all the bits and pieces. Uh, the three cores I won't waste. I, I like using these in shrimp tanks and scud tanks because they seem to really, really like them. Uh, I've, I understand that uh, they do accumulate biofilm over time and shrimp do like to pick on that. But I find even in a newly, like when I throw those in the aquarium, in, like in minutes, uh, there will be shrimp and scuds all over them, which is interesting i mean <laughs> there's some kind of fascination they have with them. maybe the texture or something i do not know so i'm going to fast forward this uh, i'm going to put these chambers together quickly and like i said this is going to sit inside nice and snugly into uh, a box filter i'm not going to be building the box uh, for this today uh, i didn't have the time i have a lot of stuff i need to get done before the holidays uh, but this is going to be something that's going to be set up for some time uh, it probably won't even have much of an update for a little while because, uh, well, again, it has to acclimate, it has to get set up, and then I have to put it in its own aquarium and have to get this fish in it. A whole pile of stuff has to happen. And, of course, I have to get plants in there and everything else. So, <clears throat> probably sometime uh, in about six weeks from now, I'll give you an update on this and we'll start the actual experiment. 
But, like I said, this is just something I wanted to do uh, now because, well, like the holidays are coming up. And, again, because it's going to take so long to set up, I wanted this up and running, hopefully, like, you know, not mid-January, but by the end of January, uh, this will be actually ready to uh, start trying to get some results for, which would be kind of nice. So, these chambers are, like I said, identical. And the nice thing about it is when I lift this up, because that nice center stack the, that goes around the lift stack, it, I don't have to disturb anything to pull these out. And that's kind of key, I think, to this. And the sponge, as you can see here, just fits ever so nicely down on top of this. It'll, it'll actually fit in a lot better when it's uh, wet as well, because uh, you'll see possibly at the, uh, like the bottom left edge there, you see it's not quite all the way down. Uh, but it, it actually does get the way it needs to be uh, when you have water on it. While I was doing this, I thought, well, it might be an interesting way of doing this instead of gluing it in and eyeballing it to make sure I got it centered. Uh, just put the sponge around it first and then uh, glue it that way. But because these all have to uh, go around a central pipe and there is only a 32nd of an inch uh, gap for them to clear, I thought it was best <laughs> just to uh, glue it the way it's supposed to be glued because uh, the sponge is malleable and uh, I could fit it around quite easily and I don't really want to end up having the you know, those little, the stacks I've been lifting uh, to pull these out, the little handles there to get in the way of the pipe itself so there you go three, identical and I'm going to build the box for this plus the second box and have that up and running in the next few days and get that ready for the start of the experiment. And there you go. That fits down there, and actually, that's a little bit more. That's more like an eighth of an inch. Anyway, it's still something I didn't want to take the chance that it wouldn't fit on because it has to be removable and removable without uh, disturbing anything. So there you go. All set and ready for the experiment. Definitely leave me comments. Let me know what you think of this. And don't bother right at the moment give me ideas for other media because, again, I want to see how this goes. I am a little concerned, like I said, that one of these is going to be more than enough. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, uh, I know when you buy sponge filters for, uh, like, commercial sponge filters, uh, they are bigger than one of these uh, for a 15-gallon tank. And I do have larger aquariums. I have 20s and 30s. So we can move up if necessary. So we'll see how that all goes. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think, of course, and I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.